The feast is great, which unites us even more to the heart of this woman, Maria Giuseppina Norcia. To celebrate her return to the Father's heart, the goal and final landing place of every son of God, called in these times to follow the path that this maiden of God has traced for us, that welcomed the child Jesus into her heart. She treasured him always to then land in the heart of the Father. This is the path that all the sons of God should take. She who welcomed the baby Jesus, that on the 13th of June, 1947, descended to manifest himself to her for the first time on a little white cloud, as it had been foretold in the sacred scriptures. She always treasured him in her little heart of maiden, to make him grow, and above all make him grow in the hearts of many she would have met. Here is that she has always remained faithful to the love of that child Jesus, even in the most difficult moments, even when the she was dying because suffering from an incurable disease. And at that moment Jesus paid her a second visit, to ask her, to help him, to bring to completion a great mission of salvation for humanity, and she instead of asking for the healing of herself, once again said, Yes, Lord, may your will be done. She accepted the invitation of Jesus to help him, to bring to completion that mission, which she carried out, fulfilling her call perfectly, until that day, July 5, 2008, when with her final and definite yes, eternal yes, she allowed the Father to bring heaven closer to the earth, to embrace this newly renewed humanity in the only begotten love. Here is this triduum which we are celebrating. Here's this feast that today ends to inaugurate the liturgical time of the Marian Ascent, which will begin tomorrow and after forty days will culminate in the solemn feast of the Assumption into heaven of the Most Holy Mary. Mary, 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 Mother Church, New Jerusalem. Here's the path that today the children of God are called to follow, to meet the coming Lord, on this itinerary of Jesus' return. That here is accomplished, because here humanity is called to be reborn, in this little cradle of the baby Jesus, who wants to understand the mystery of the Lord's return must start from the heart of this maiden, must start from her heart that, just as St. Paul says in the letter to the Romans, when he speaks of the mystery of predestination, she has been predestined, chosen by the Father, since the foundation of time, to carry out her mission, here is that great revelation of October 28, 1985, when Jesus revealed to her, My daughter, you are never alone. You have been in relationship with me since I created you, but I conceived you before time, and I've known since always. What a mystery! And that same month of October, nine years later, Jesus returning to her and speaking of his return in that message that we all remember, said to her, here I make myself child again. I come here, in this lost place, to be born again, in the heart of a little girl who loved me as my mother loved me. Here's the mystery of the only begotten love that proceeds in history. That love that dwelt in the heart of Mary most holy, and that dwelt in the heart of this woman who embodied in life the virtues of most holy Mary. Two hearts, one love. Two distinct people, a single interweaving of love, to make consist in everyone, Christ. The living bread, here descended, again from heaven, to dwell eternally, in the hearts of those who have welcomed him, that welcome him and who will welcome him. This is the great mystery, the great beatitude, to which we have been called. This is why Jesus said in a message, Blessed are those who set foot in this land where I descended as child for the salvation of the world. Blessed are we, I tell you, that in our life journey we met this woman that relieved us from every human burden and gave us new life in Christ. Blessed are we, and thank you, Mother, for everything you have done for each of us. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We will never forget that inner peace and intimate joy that shone from your eyes and that she was able to pass on to us, even in the difficult times, 
of great trial and suffering that she lived. With her smile she loosened human laces and made us savor the delights of heaven. And that's why we're here, because she made us fall in love with Jesus. Alive in you, Mother the Blessedness, because you have lived all those beatitudes that we have all proclaimed today, all of them. Blessed and holy, not so much and not just because every day of her earthly mission, of those 33 years of public ministry, she was able to see Jesus, but above all because she has always and only done the will of God. Here is the key that opened the Father's heart, so that we could receive a part of his heart, that divine child, here descended from heaven, to restore our hearts in her infinite love. Many were the signs of this living restoration. Here are those miracles of which so many of us have been witnesses. Miracles that God was able to work because he saw the faithfulness of this woman. Thanks to her living fidelity, despite the suffering, the numerous sufferings, caused above all by those who should have understood her more than others. Let's say ministers and relatives presumed such. She has always gone forward. She has never stopped. She never let herself be intimidated. She never got discouraged. For the love of God, for the love of each of us, here is true love, not talk, but concrete facts. Here is the love of this woman that kept her going even when eminent people did everything to silence her, to prevent her from announcing the mystery of the new Jerusalem that Jesus had revealed to her and that he had asked her to announce. But instead of obeying to men, she obeyed to God. And here from the gift of her life this church was born, universal Christian of the new Jerusalem founded on the rock, Christ. This church that this woman has prepared, has announced, and has entrusted to that young man that Jesus had promised to her, that would have arrived and that has arrived, and that once he arrived, he too wanted to respond to God's call, putting aside many human projects. However legitimate, they are to give space to God's plan, to take on the burden, even before the honor, to lead this church, our Pontiff Samuel, proclaimed Pontiff by acclamation of all the people who recognized him as his shepherd true pastor of this church. Here is this church, which was not wanted by men, but by God. This church that wants to complete what this woman started. This church that wants to keep alive faithfulness to Christ and his teachings. Christ the living and true rock. To counteract the action of a house profoundly divided, no longer founded on the rock, which carries out an inconsistent and evanescent action that has discarded the cornerstone Christ, debasing his sacrifice, to embrace an anti-Christian thought, and promote a new world religion, based on deceptive love and on a false mercy that by no longer requiring any sacrifice, any repentance, would like to lead everyone to eternal perdition. That's why Jesus descended here. That's why Jesus said, It is necessary for you to approach this, my second and last grotto, for there will never be another one again. Because here the baby Jesus descended and nowhere else. For here the Father found the pure heart of a maiden, ready to receive him and not elsewhere. Here is that by her sacrifice she taught us the true value of God's mercy, which can never be a gift. Here is that invitation from Jesus to hurry up, to tell everyone not to look elsewhere, for that mercy that here would be dispensed in this church, because here the Father would have sent as he sent his Holy Spirit laying the first stone of the, the holy city. The New Jerusalem here is this Christian church, universal of the New Jerusalem, founded on the rock. A church that will never be undermined, because that rock will never be undermined by slander and from the false accusations of the world while the stones of another house deeply divided because no longer founded on the rock are crumbling and will crumble always more in front of the manifestation of the power of God. Just as will crumble the human pride of so many who have despised this holy dwelling by trampling on the little ones and the last. In the face of what is to be manifested, do not be afraid, because this church will stand firm.
because it is founded on Christ. Because this church is not made of walls, of precious frescoes, but of saints in flesh and blood, as Jesus said. Ready for any sacrifice, in order to go out to meet everyone, to bring this proclamation of love. To gather, in this holy fold, the flock of God scattered everywhere in the world. Because of blind guides who do not see and do not want to make see, they will see what the sons of God are made of. They will see the fabric of God's children. Our spiritual mother was also a seamstress, so she chose the fabric well. They will see, and we will see at the end of the work that this woman has done and will continue to do. When the work will be finished, how beautiful will be God's work, which the Lord has reserved for all those who will remain faithful to Him. Be strong, dear brothers and sisters. Do not be intimidated by anything or anyone. Let us move forward, certain of this hope that the Lord has placed in our hearts. Blessed and holy, she who started this work. Blessed and holy are those who, knowing her, have loved her. They love her, and they will love her. To love Jesus always more. We will see with our own eyes, this tortured earth finally renewed by the purifying fire of the Spirit of God. And this earth finally will be renewed by the love of God, and peace will be stable. In Mary, with Mary, and for Maria, that will remain forever with her children, in the heart of the Father, which already beats here, to never stop ever again.